welcome back to Good Morning Sri Lanka. We have a legendary personality just next to me. I think that uh, proves it right when I call you a legend in the field of education. And obviously, it's a new thing for Sri Lanka as well. I mean, the Cambridge uh, University is coming down to Sri Lanka. That you are doing a fabulous job in getting the standards and raising the standards in uh, students' knowledge. I think. But a, dis a burning question for a lot of students is, and a lot of parents, in fact, as well. Is it possible for a student in Sri Lanka to study in international schools, especially the middle income earning families, and then go abroad? I mean, they don't have the money to go abroad and then attend a university. Is it possible for them to stick here and study in Sri Lanka in universities in this syllabus? Uh, yeah, there are, there are in fact lots of options. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, when, when Cambridge students uh, leave their schools with their A levels, they've They've really got a basic choice of staying in Sri Lanka, um, and if they do that, they would be studying at private universities, which are affiliated to international institutions. Okay. And there are plenty of examples of such such places uh, in Sri Lanka, and they have a, a very good reputation for uh, a high standard of uh, bachelor and diploma level programs. And the other option, of course, is is to go overseas uh, and. I, I don't think you should always associate studying overseas with uh, something necessarily very expensive mm -hmm. because there are a lot of uh, scholarships available. Uh, not only that, but a student with good grades in, in their full A-levels can get um, credit in the USA so they don't actually have to start at the beginning of a freshman program. Uh, they can miss some of the courses in, in a bachelor's program uh, which is greatly to their advantage because it shortens the time that they then spend overseas. Um, there are options, obviously, in the UK. Okay. Uh, Cambridge is a, obviously a very well-known yeah. uh, name in the UK, and all UK universities recognise Cambridge International Qualifications and welcome students to their uh, to their institutions. Um, and then there are options closer to home as well. We, we have seen Sri Lankan students going to Singapore, for example. Mm. Uh, Malaysia is a very popular destination, so is India, uh, Australia and New Zealand. Okay. Uh, and we have worked hard with uh, universities in all of these countries to ensure that the pathway into those universities is smooth so that uh, there are no, there's no red tape that students have to deal with and they can get into their universities as effortlessly as they would if they were joining a university here in Sri Lanka. In comparison with uh, the global students, uh, especially with the uh, Asian students, how do the Asian students compare globally? Well, very well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I can say that with real confidence because uh, we have um, an award ceremony every year which is for uh, Cambridge Outstanding Learners. Um, it, it's, it's a really lovely event because it, it attracts not only students who are going to receive their certificates but also their parents, their teachers, their principals. It's a very proud moment for everybody. Um, and this is the, the moment when we identify students who've come top in a particular syllabus, mm -hmm. uh, either in Sri Lanka or sometimes in the world. E every year we do have world toppers. Uh, and I think that reflects um, the quality of teaching and learning, the commitment and the dedication, and importantly, the level of support that students receive from their families. Uh, I think it is well recognized that um, South Asian families do provide a lot of support to their children. Education is a high priority for them. It's very important that uh, their children have the best opportunities that are available. And the result of that is very motivated students, very hardworking students uh, who treat, achieve great results. Okay. How is, um, for me, what I really wanted to know was how is Cambridge like preparing itself uh, for the new age. I mean, it is the new age right now. Technology is booming. So, what what does is Cambridge doing? You know, to stay up in the game. Well, well we can talk about that from various angles. Mm -hmm. um, one is from the angle of assessment and, sure. and the way that assessment is changing. Uh, so, there's much greater use of technology in the assessment process, for example, uh, and there's much more online marking uh, every year as each year passes. We 
mark a greater number, a greater percentage of answer scripts online, mm -hmm. which has got huge advantages um, uh, in many different ways. So uh, the result feedback on that will be on the instant, or how does that work? Yeah, the results will uh, eventually come out earlier as a mm -hmm. result of this process, because okay. we will be able to... And what's the duration? Well, our examinations are in, in May, June, for mm -hmm. example, and the results are coming out in, in August. Yes. So th that, that's the sort of okay. time span. Mm -hmm. There are lots of quality checks mm -hmm. that have to take place, whether the assessment is online or, or pen and paper. But another angle of the future would be uh, the sort of new syllabuses mm -hmm. that we are designing. So we are constantly bringing out new cutting-edge uh, syllabuses in new subjects. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have recently introduced um, an interdisciplinary subject, oh. which is called Global Perspectives. Okay. Uh, and this is quite groundbreaking. Uh, I, I think it's probably the first of its kind at the O-level, the Secondary 2 uh, program. And it looks at issues from different perspectives, those uh, of an individual uh, at a national level and also at an international level. Uh, but the way students' work and progress is assessed is also very interesting because we not only have a conventional examination with mm -hmm. a pen and a paper, yeah. but students also have to complete a, a project. And uh, that in itself is of interest because the project has to be completed partly as a group and partly as an individual. So. Uh, you are required to work collaboratively and we see collaborative working as a very important skill for, for students to be able to to develop and acquire. So it's 50% assignment plus 50% uh, And exam. there's an element of portfolio work as well. Uh, All right. So uh, students will be constructing, compiling a portfolio of work which they then submit for marking and, and moderation. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much getting students involved in every sort of aspect that you probably could which get Which I think is in. a terrific idea. It is. Anyways, uh, keeping that in mind, we'll go into a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with Good Morning Sri Lanka. Welcome back to Good Morning Sri Lanka, the Thursday's edition, 30th of May 2013. Of course, you've got William just next to me. Uh, talking about the education reform in UK, it's subject to debate. A lot of people disagree, a lot of people agree. Your thoughts about it and how it has influenced the Cambridge University syllabus? Well, there's lots happening in the UK mm -hmm. right now, but I, I think the important thing for everybody to know is that this doesn't actually have any impact on Cambridge International qualifications. Um, the, the changes in the UK um, are largely to do with the structure of syllabuses and of the actual assessments themselves. Uh, and that structure is known as a modular structure and it's changing to become a more linear structure. So in a instead of having a, an exam at, at the end of every module, there would be examinations at, at the very end of the, of the line, if you like. Um, now, our qualifications are already linear. Mm -hmm. uh, so the changes that are taking place in the UK actually endorse the position that we're already in. Okay. Uh, and there's no, there's no need to, to, to change uh, from that point of view. Um, other aspects also remain unchanged. Um, for example, at the A level, uh, we, we offer an AS level at the end of the first year, uh, which then counts towards the A level at the end of the second year. Now, that also remains unchanged. That there are some changes occurring in the UK in that respect, but we know that there's a strong demand for the structure that we have and that universities worldwide really welcome the structure that we have. So that's not going to change either. Uh, and the last point, I think, would be that uh, we offer examinations twice a year. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, examinations in May, June, as I mentioned before. Uh, we also have examinations in October, November. And both of those sessions will continue as before. So I think that the, the, the main point here is that the UK is actually busy introducing quite a lot of reforms, uh, but some of the most important reforms in the UK actually underline what we're already doing. So we feel that we're in a very strong position and, and we're very happy about that. Okay. 
Um, going back to a topic that uh, we already spoke about, uh, William, if you don't mind me calling you William, um, is that I wanted to know, and I asked you about the new methods that is in the Cam that's prescribed to the Cambridge syllabus. Is this available in Sri Lanka? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I was talking about some of the professional qualifications which mm -hmm. teachers can take, uh, qualifications which are offered by us. So yeah. we, we offer a Cambridge certificate, we also offer a, a Cambridge diploma. And uh, very much so. These uh, certificates and diplomas are available here. Uh, there are training institutes which offer these qualifications and courses to teachers from a variety of schools, so they would come from their schools and attend at the training institute. Uh, we also have schools which are offering these qualifications in their own schools for their own mm -hmm. teachers. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot happening in Sri Lanka right now, and of course uh, the online courses, which I mentioned previously, have the huge advantage of being globally accessible. Yeah. So courses that we provide in teaching and assessing skills in science or in mathematics or in languages, for example, are accessed equally by teachers all over the world. We, we operate in 160 countries worldwide, yeah. and Sri Lankan teachers are very much part of that community. Well, William, it was very insightful today. Uh, about the Cambridge syllabus. Would you agree, Barnum? An eye opener, to be very frank. An eye opener. You. So, thank sure. you so much for making the studios with us today. It's been a blast. Of course, we're going to have a terrific morning today. Uh, <laughs> terrific morning? It, since you saw me and William and everyone else, it's going to be a great morning. Anyway, thank you so much for watching Good Morning Sri Lanka. We hope to see you tomorrow. And also, you can visit us on our Facebook page on www.facebook.com forward slash Good Morning Sri Lanka. Click the like button and see my face. <laughs>